Hey everyone, and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So we have the event, Timora's Gift. How can you make the most of it? Well, you very simply want to just be going and killing as many enemies as possible. When you kill an enemy, you have a chance to drop one of these boxes, which are these Timora gifts. You can see one of them right in front of me there. We pick it up and you can see we get a gift of Timora. So I managed to obtain 500 of those and we're going to open them within this video. Now you can see each gift of Tamora has a chance to give you one of the following. We open one as an example and you can see we just got some reagents there for crafting. And that's from the section profession resources. Uncommon, rare and epic. Very oddly though we received a common. But yeah, you can open a whole bunch of these. We'll just spam a bunch. And you can see the rewards that we're obtaining there. And you're just going to get like refinement points. You're going to get potions and more random profession supplies. Most of them are, yeah, it's just junk that you can easy get just by crafting, just by gathering. Maybe one or two things will sell, but I wouldn't count on it. You can even get some elixirs, which isn't too bad for Hammer's favorite elixir. But you can see we nearly have a hundred opened and yeah, you really aren't obtaining much. You can see you also do obtain the currency for the event. These favor of Timora, which will allow you to like spend them to buy guaranteed rewards in the store. And I'll show you that after we manage to open the rest of these. But yeah, it's very disappointing with regards to these boxes. I would not bother go farm them specifically. Just play the game as you normally would and you'll get these just by questing. You'll get them by doing your content like dungeons and such. And otherwise, yeah, the rewards again are just very terrible. And you can see you also obtain fashion. Like just here, we obtained this fool slippers of Neverwinter. And we also obtained the coin storm, which is one of the, the cooler vanity pets, which you're going to have to open these boxes for. I'll showcase it again just after we finish opening these remainder. There you can see we obtained the artifact as well, which isn't that bad. And I'll upgrade it to mythic and we'll showcase that as well. So we're on to our last hundred here. Still, yeah. Nothing, nothing special in these boxes. You can read through, you can read through what it should be dropping and none of them are that expensive, especially since it's all just kind of fashion based. Nothing apart from the artifact is really going to give your character much power. Although you can look at these Timor's lucky coins and there can be somewhat of a viable belt item. You can see you essentially slot them in here and it goes right there and it will give you 500 rating points. The unfortunate thing is it's utterly random. Like we use it right there. That's flipping the coin as a cool animation. And just here you can see then on your buffs what exactly it's giving us. It's giving us bonus critical strike. So just 500 of that is like 0.5% if you make use of the rating points, which is minuscule. If that coin gave 5,000 ratings and specifically based on your role, so a DPS, let's say it could only give one of the five offensive stats or a tank, one of the five defensive stats. And if you're a healer, one of the four healing stats, then it might be viable as you could fit that in by switching some things around. And it would have to be like 5,000 ratings, not just 500. And overall, the good thing is that, yeah, these rewards are all unbound, so you can go and sell them. And if you're lucky enough to get like multiple drops of the fashion, which we didn't, we got one piece in 500. Yeah, then you could go and sell that and make some astral diamonds. You can see them on the auction house just there, like your fancy crown, your robes and your slippers, all are each under 100k. So you can get that full set if you wanted to, not that expensive. And again, it's not going to warrant opening these boxes and buying them or just grinding for them when you're only getting like one in 500. If you do want the vanity pet, the coin storm, which we shall go and actually summon, well, unfortunately, it's character bound and it is one of the coolest vanity pets, in my opinion. You summon like a little cloud which floats above you and it's just going to shower coins everywhere. Yeah, it's one of the bigger vanity pets, all things considered, and one of the coolest. Again, you can only get it if you actually open those gifts and get lucky as you're not going to be able to sell it 
dropped as bound to character. So we obtained a bunch of the currency as well for the event, which we can see we can now spend to purchase these rewards. We got 48 in 500 boxes, which is only just enough to buy that Queen Storm Vanity Pet, which directly binds on pickup to your character. So make sure you're buying on the right character and opening these boxes then on the right character. But otherwise, we have enough to buy like two pieces of the Fool's Fashion. And you can also get like the Fool's Crown there as well, which is just like a headpiece that will fit with the rest of your gear. Otherwise, again, we have the artifact, which we did not get enough currency for even after opening 500 boxes. And then you have the lucky coin, which is showcased. You simply flip the coin and stick it on your belt and you gain that as ratings, which is just very underwhelming compared to Forger's box or the new spider totem. Additionally, you have the Imperial Fancy Horse, which is just another horse. There's so many in the game. And ultimately, what I want to check out now is the artifact. So we have the artifact right here and let's get that thing upgraded all the way to mythic and we can see how it looks and how much damage it actually can deal. You can upgrade it again without binding it. We're simply just going to go use some coal motes there again. It's the previous server, so don't worry about it. And we can get that upgraded all the way to mythic. And as long as you haven't equipped it, the nice thing is these days they don't get bound until you equip them. So you can sell them at like mythic which is very good in my opinion for the economy. But ultimately this artifact, if we read through the tooltip, it basically has like a 50-50 chance to give a decent effect in my opinion. Like you can't rely on this artifact. Timora, all about luck and yeah. So you're either going to gain one benefit, which will increase all everybody's survivability, you and your allies by 9% and heal you, or you gain the damage buff, which is only for you and it's 15%. Yeah, it's 15%, which is decent, but it's again, it's not going to be competitive with something like the Soul Sight Crystal for personal damage of like 25%. And on top of that, again, it's, it's random whether you actually gain the damage bonus. So let's go and equip this artifact. Let's just stick it in our primary. You will have to bind it. It only has 600 item level, unfortunately. And it doesn't matter where you are, you can cast it. But if you target enemies, you will basically knock them down, only up to five of them, dealing a little bit of damage. Only 27,000, it says in the school chip. It'll probably be a bit more with other buffs. But compare that to something like Dragon Bone Blades, already dealing like 46,000 and then like 23,000 per second for 10 seconds. Yeah, you're already gaining more than like 250,000 damage from the Dragon Bone Blades. Timora's Gift, again, only like 27,000. So we can just flip it here on the ground. We just cast it. It's this big area. So you'll affect everybody within that area in terms of enemies and then create this area around you, which is going to be this buff area. It's either protection. You can see this time we got Timora's Blessing, which is the shield icon, which I believe allows us to gain the defense. And we can use it again later, but it does seem to last 20 seconds, which all things considered isn't bad in terms of a duration. And you can see it will again reduce everybody's damage taken by 9% and heal them. Again, I don't think it's going to be in any way competitive in terms of survivability with something like your sigil of the paladin which is very easy to obtain and gives everybody 15 percent damage reduction and heals them in the area the area only lasts in like 15 seconds though again we can cast the coin let's see what do we obtain this time and we obtained, I believe, the same defensive buff as we did last time. It's basically 50-50. I think the artifact is far too underwhelming. It could have double the values that it shows there. It could have 1,200 item level, and then I would rate it as like a good secondary artifact, and potentially if it had like a 30% damage gain, I don't know. I don't like that it's orangey like that. I can understand why it is just for the theming sake. But overall, the event is, again, pretty much just fashion and for the gimmick. The most cool thing in this event is that storm, the little shower of coins that you can summon beside you and follow you around everywhere. Let's take another gamble on the coin and see, do we obtain the damage buff? We do. It glows red. 
Uh, we can see we don't obtain any buffs there, but I assume we gain the extra 15% damage. It doesn't show anywhere. You might not actually obtain it. I could go and test it, but I don't really see the need for it as the artifact is, I don't see it as being used, guys. It's not worth upgrading. Artifacts to get to Mythic usually cost like a million astral diamonds. And so upgrading this one is a straight up no-no. Special thank you again to these channel members for their continued support. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.